Hi everyone, Vigorous Rapscallion here with another quick chip and gizmo tutorial. Today we're going to be doing the boolean chip and we're going to be doing the piston gizmo. The boolean's a pretty simple chip. Let's go ahead and get one in front of us. Now these are a little bit older than a lot of the functions we're dealing with. These are binary functions, so they only deal with ones and zeros. So let's get a variable up with a few of those going on. And one corresponds to true, zero corresponds to false. So let's give this two true settings and one false setting. And let's pull up an output chip so we can see what's going on here. We get two because we got two outputs there. And let's connect them up. So right now nothing's happening because we have zero inputs. And how this works is being an AND gate. If if and only if all of these are true, every incoming node, then it's going to output a true state, a 1, from this red node here. If any of the inputs are false, it's going to output a false state. It's going to output a 1 from here instead. So let's see if it works. Uh, we hook up a 1, and sure enough, that becomes our true state. Uh, if we've got a 0 that we put in with that, now, not every single input here is true, so we're getting an output from the false gate. And it doesn't matter how many of them are true, if any of them are false, that's the output you're going to get. So let's go ahead and look at the next setting, which is the OR gate. Very similar, the difference being that if any of these are true, you get an output from your true state. So let's see how that works. Let's connect up our zero here. And we see that we're getting an output from our false state, because there's only one input and it's false. But if any of the other inputs are true, we get an output of a true state. The last setting for this one is going to be the NOT gate. And the NOT gate, uh, I don't see users using it a lot in this context, but I'm still going to go over it. Basically all it does is it's a switching gate. so. Um, whatever uh, input you put into there, be it a 0 or a 1, once again this is binary logic, it's going to output the opposite. Right now we have a 0 hooked up, so we're getting an output of a 1. If instead we had a 1 hooked up, we'd be getting an output of 0. It's just a simple switching gate. Uh, so that's pretty much all you need to know about the boolean. Let's go ahead and move on to the piston gizmo. What the hell? Is this a glitch or a feature? <laughs> I really don't know. So let's move on to that piston gizmo. Let's go ahead and pull that up. It's in the gizmos menu, piston. Let's turn on snap. The reason we want to turn snap on is in this setup, I'm going to have this move straight up and down. So if it comes out at an angle at all, it's going to move, say, straight and back. You can actually use a piston gizmo to move horizontally or diagonal ways or whichever ways your little heart desires. But in this case, I want it to move up and down. We're going to be opening this door at a sort of gun range, and then there's, it's going to reveal a target behind it. So let's get that placed. Go ahead and get our gizmo out there. Nice, looking good. Um, so it looks like it's got a little node on the top. It looks like it's got two input nodes on the side. And we should see it in a second. Sometimes it takes a moment for this to sort of spawn, but there's going to be a big green thing coming out of the top of that. Now, I want to demonstrate. There it is. So we've got some sort of green ethereal deal coming out of the top. Now, these don't actually need to be right underneath the thing that you're moving. I just placed it there initially, but to demonstrate that, let's move it out a little bit so you can see that it's going to work just fine, even if it's not underneath the object. It's going to move the object relative to its axis. So if this was tilted sideways, it would move the door open sideways, but since it's up and down, it's going to move up and down. Let's take a look at the settings and the nodes. Let's start with the settings. It's like we've got acceleration time in seconds. That's set to zero right now, so it's probably, you know, a more complicated option. We're going to come back to it. Max travel distance looks pretty apparent, though. We've got a five in there. there it's in meters. And that thing looks like it's about five meters tall. So how are we going to bring this spirit rod down? Let's go ahead and input a value that's more appropriate for our setup. Now, this door is about 70 centimeters, so we don't need it to move all that far. Let's go a little further than that. Let's go like 0.8 meters. And now that looks like it's a little bit more in line. You know, just, uh, just because, let's maybe put it up to 0.9 just so it overlaps a little. Okay, there we go. So let's take a look at the nodes we have here. 
We've got an on and off. So that looks like a binary input. That looks like it's going to accept either a zero or a one, a false or true state. And then we've got speed in centimeters per second. Okay, great. Um, that all seems pretty straightforward. We either have it on or it's not on, and we input a speed. But, you know, right now that's just going to move the piston. It's not going to do anything else, so we're going to want to hook it up to something. So to do that, we're going to grab the node at the top. We're going to connect it to whatever object we want to move, in this case the gun range door. Then we're going to grab a variable so we can make things start to actually happen. Let's put that bad boy over there. So what do we need in here? Well, we're going to want a 1 to turn this gizmo on. And then what was that speed in? Let's take a look again. Centimeters per second. So one centimeter per second, that's not very fast. Uh, that's going to take a real, real long time to open this door. So let's input something a little bigger. Let's go with 40. Great. And let's connect her up. So we've got 40 as our velocity now, but the object is, or the gizmo is still deactivated, still in its off state. Let's turn it on. Bam, just like that, it starts moving at 40 centimeters per second. It opens, and hootie hoo, we've got a candle. We can shoot it. We can cause some other events to happen. Uh, you know, that door doesn't look so great, though. I'd like to change that. And luckily, you can actually change these settings without reinitializing this system. It turns out this is too long. I didn't want it to move that long. But let's just bring it down. That looks a little better. 0.7 looks perfect, though. Now there's an overlap between those two objects. It looks like it's still a part of each other. It's not just floating off in space and looking all funky. And you can adjust things like that without having to disconnect everything, which is super convenient. But now we probably want to bring our door back down. And this is a binary input. The only thing we can put in here is on or off, 0 or 1. Uh, so we're going to have to do something else to get it to move backwards. And since we've got speed in centimeters square here, probably we're going to need that to be a negative value. So let's try that and see if it works. Let's do the same. Let's do 40, but let's just do negative 40. Okay. And there you go. It moves right back down. Perfection. Uh, there was one other uh, set, or, um, setting in there that we didn't get go over, so I'm going to talk about that real quick. That's acceleration time just here, and uh, you might be thinking, okay, so is that so like you could ping it and it'll go up in increment or something like that? But no, what acceleration time does is actually a smooth acceleration tool. If you want this to look a little more realistic, you know, in real life, motors don't just turn on at the speed that they're going to be at, maintain that speed and go up. Some do, but most don't. Um, so usually things have to accelerate. So if you want to give a little more realistic of a look to your game items, you can kind of toy around with this and see what works for you. You know, it's going to depend on how far it's going, how fast it's going. There's a lot of different factors for how this is going to work. But I'm sort of going to show you the basics of it. So we sent it to, set that to two seconds. And, uh, whoops, we're actually going to want setup. Let's turn that off for now and turn this back to a positive value so that I'll be going upwards again. Okie dokie. And now let's turn it on and see, well, let's get that out of our way. Let's turn it on and see what happens. This time it's going to accelerate smoothly instead of just shooting straight up to 40 centimeters per second. And you see we got a little bit of a smoother acceleration. That felt a little slow, so if I was making this in a game, I'd probably go back and tweak that. But I'm not going to make you watch that. So you may be wondering, OK, great, you know, this has to be a negative or a positive value to get the piston to move up or down. How do we change that? If you're pretty good with chips, you already probably have a few ideas about how to do that. But if you're not, you know, have no fear. Uh, I'm going to have a part two to this video where I show how to implement this in a larger system and how to get it to switch using just a couple of circuits. And we're going to set up a simple game using these two extra targets in addition to the one that we already built and set up. So uh, if you're still struggling or if that's something you'd be interested in watching, stay tuned, check out part two. It should be up in about six hours or so once I finish uh, editing that video. But uh, whether or not you watch that one, thanks for watching this one and have a nice day.